Mr. Ambassador, Professor Ko, professors, fellows, students, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Gregory Clancy, the master of Tembusu College at NUS, and it's my great pleasure and privilege to open the fourth Tembusu Forum. As most of you know, the Forum is our flagship event at Tembusu College and has a pioneering purpose at NUS to engage policymakers, diplomats, and intellectuals in discussion of important topics before an audience primarily of bright and ambitious undergraduates, the future leaders of Singapore and Asia. That's you, my young friends. You're what this is all about. We've not been afraid in this series to tackle big and controversial issues. We launched it, as you'll remember, by inviting the Israeli ambassador and a distinguished American academic to debate the question, should the UN recognize Palestine as a state? In the second forum, the Japanese ambassador discussed his country's response to the Fukushima disaster, as well as the moral boost given that nation by the victory of the women's football team in the FIFA World Cup game. We followed this with a special forum on the UN-designated Holocaust Memorial Day. The German ambassador and a distinguished panel not only memorialized victims of that European genocide, but expanded the discussion to include religious and racial tolerance in Asia. For this, the capstone forum of the academic year, we are honored to host an equally distinguished panel and discuss an extraordinarily topical issue of great relevance to members of the audience and to indeed the world. Now to introduce that issue, let me invite to the podium the founder, organizer, and moderator of the Tembusu Forum, a man whom I'm not only honored but delighted to work with on a daily basis, our esteemed rector at Tembusu College, Professor and Ambassador Tommy Ko. Thank you very much, Greg. I would like to add my welcome to all our friends to the fourth edition of the Tembusu Forum. We have chosen a historic day to have a very important forum. Ambassador Edelman reminded me a few minutes ago that on this day, the 7th of March, 40 years ago, Henry Kissinger made his historic visit to China. So it is good that we've chosen this day to talk about perhaps the most important bilateral relationship in the world, the relationship between the United States and the People's Republic of China. Fortune has been kind to us because yesterday, in Beijing, the Foreign Minister of China, Mr. Yang Jieqi, an old friend, um, gave a press conference. And uh, at this press conference, he had uh, many things to say about China's important relations with the United States. And I would just like to quote a few um, lines from his uh, statement. He said, China reiterates its welcome of an American presence in Asia. China is in favor of a constructive role by the United States in this region. But he naturally had some um, cautionary words. He said, the US must respect China's core interests and uh, this is a bit uh, impolite. Keep its nose out of the disputes in this region, which should be settled by the relevant parties themselves. In particular, the United States sh should honor its commitments and carefully and properly handle Taiwan and Tibet-related issues that concern China's core interests. So he mentioned Taiwan and Tibet 
as two of China's core interests, it, it basically appealing to America to respect China's core interests. He also had something to say about South China Sea, and I'll just quote this. On the disputes in the region, Mr. Yang pointed out to the South China Sea issue as an example of differences which are best addressed without an external empire involved. And quote, he said, I believe China and the relevant countries have the wisdom and the ability to deal with the South China Sea properly, unquote. <clears throat> I just want to put this discussion in this historical context. There are two views in the world on whether the United States will live in peace with a rising China. One view is that conflict between China and the United States is inevitable because it often happens when an incumbent hegemon is faced with a rising challenger. And they will say that, of course, there are exceptions to this general rule, and the the exception to this general one exception to this general rule is when the United States overtook the United Kingdom as the hegemonic power of the world after the Second World War. Another view, the opposite view, is that we now live in a different world. We live in a world in which countries are very interdependent. It's a very globalized and interdependent world. And competition between nations is, is no longer a zero-sum game. And the rise of China is not necessarily detrimental to the interests of the United States. And President Obama has repeated many times that the United States welcomes the rise of China and does not see the growing strength and prosperity of China as a threat to American national interests. So a lot is at stake in the US presidential elections in November this year. If President Obama is re-elected, I think there will be peace between the United States and China. However, if some of his uh, Republican opponents, judging by, by their campaign rhetoric, were to become the next president of the United States, then I think we have uh, reason to worry whether the state of affairs which now prevail between the United States and China will continue. So that's all that I want to say. We have four distinguished speakers who will share their thoughts with us. Each of them will speak for 15 minutes, followed by a Q&A session, which I will moderate. And to lead off, we have none other than the distinguished ambassador of the United States, the Singapore a good personal friend, David Edelman. David, before assuming this important position, was in the private practice of law in Atlanta, Georgia. But he was also a member of the Senate of the state of Georgia. And he's a close personal friend of President Obama. And as, if I recall correctly, David, you were chairman of his campaign in Georgia. So it is with very great pleasure that I invite Ambassador Edelman to speak to us. 